Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be all about burnout in cybersecurity. Okay, so for anyone who has been keeping up with news around around the overall prospects of cybersecurity careers, you have probably seen many, many articles talking about the rise of burnout in cybersecurity. And I know I come on this channel and talk to you guys about getting into cybersecurity as a great career option, but obviously I don't want to just sugarcoat things. For example, one survey that I found that asked cybersecurity professionals whether or not they would recommend a cybersecurity career to people who are outside of the industry, only 33% of people said yes and the other 67% said no. So the fact that only one third of cybersecurity professionals who answered the survey said that they would recommend other people to get into cybersecurity is definitely a red flag, as well as the fact that you can find dozens of articles out there talking about cybersecurity professionals who are overworked with cybersecurity teams that are understaffed. And even another article that says over half or 51% of cybersecurity professionals are kept up at night by the stress of the job and work challenges. So that obviously is an alarming number and I've definitely had those times. So basically, I wanted to create this video to kind of share with you guys my experience as well as the different things that can lead to burnout, especially as a cybersecurity professional, as our jobs are very specialized and have very specific circumstances that you probably won't find in other jobs like software engineering or data science. Because cybersecurity is so events focused and incident based, anything can go wrong at any time. And that is the thing that causes probably the most anxiety and stress in general across cybersecurity. And this could be for any role in cybersecurity, as well as whether or not you're entry level compared to someone in the C-suite, a senior cybersecurity professional, or someone who is a CISO. Okay, so let's start with one of the biggest things that probably lead to anxiety and stress at work, and that is dealing with incident response, fire drills, emergencies, anything that comes up on a day-to-day -day basis that is unplanned and unexpected. So for most jobs, even jobs in tech, you go into a job, you know what you have to do for the day, you probably have assignments. Even as a software engineer, you probably have stories or tickets assigned to you for things that you have to build out. Maybe if there is a production issue where your code crashes, then you probably do have to drop everything and fix that bug right away. It's typically just going to be the application that you work on and it'll probably only affect, you know, a relatively smaller number of people. But when you go into cybersecurity, as someone who is defending a company, maintaining security across multiple applications, multiple platforms, you even have to worry about your vendors and their vendors and their vendors' vendors. If you really go into it, if you're someone who is trying to find endless, infinite things to worry about, then cybersecurity is literally that job. Because honestly, there are probably infinite or towards infinite number of ways for things to break down, crash, not work, stop working, become unavailable, hacked into, so many different things could go wrong. And it's the fact that these things that can go wrong can go wrong at any time, at any moment without warning, especially for zero day exploits. Those are the things that can really cause you to stress out as a security professional, no matter where in the chain you are. I really do think that the way your company handles incident response is going to be the primary or one of the primary drivers of how much stress is caused to you. Because if you're working in an environment where, where maybe there isn't really an incident response procedure laid out, or maybe there is, but it's not followed, then when something does happen, you're going to have a really, really stressful time trying to get people together, trying to manage all of the moving parts, the people, the technology that are affected by the incident or the exploit or whatever the scenario is. And oftentimes incidents can span across multiple days. You can try your best to secure your perimeter, secure your applications, try to lock down everything as much as you can. But once in a while, there may be an incident, big or small, that comes to be and you really wanted to make it as positive of an experience as possible with your cybersecurity team as well as every team that is involved. And really the best way to do that is to have a very good incident response procedure that people want to follow, people will refer back to, and actually has steps on what to do when things go wrong. And I'm so excited to thank BetterHelp as the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp has customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. What I love about BetterHelp is that it is online therapy at your fingertips and it's completely in your control. And what I also want to emphasize is that therapy is something that everyone can benefit from especially if you're someone who's watching this video and find that many of the topics that I've covered today about burnout resonates with you, it's really helpful to talk to a professional therapist about the things that you're going through. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. It's really easy to get started and you just need to fill out a quick questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with a professional therapist within 48 hours. 
Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Sandra, which is also linked in the description below. And something that I've come to learn is that you definitely will not regret investing in your mental health. So thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring and let's get back to the rest of the video. All right, the next thing on this list is probably another one that you guys have heard of before and that is alert fatigue. But based on a definition of alert fatigue by Atlassian, it is when an overwhelming number of alerts desensitizes the people tasked with responding to them, leading to missed or ignored alerts or delayed responses. The main problem, according to most, is the sheer number of alerts. So for example, if you're someone who is working in an SOC or a security operations center, as an SOC analyst, you're probably getting many, many, many alerts every day. It could be hundreds, it could even be thousands, depending on how your company has set up the dashboards and the types of alerts that you get. And honestly, I don't believe humans were meant to look at thousands of alerts a day and be able to properly and be able to properly analyze and assess them. This is probably one of the biggest things that leads to burnout. And especially if your team is one of those that take a lot of alerts on manually. For example, you could be getting hundreds of suspicious events from various different applications across your company. And a lot of times these are either very low risk, very low priority, or they are false positives. And when your job is really to look at an alert and check to see the same alert over and over again is a false positive, you really do get desensitized because if you're getting the same alert over and over again hundreds of times a week and it's exactly the same, then you're probably not going to look into it as deeply as you would if you only saw it once a week or once a month. And one of the best ways to avoid alert fatigue is really through automation. So whatever reporting dashboards or metrics or scanning tools that you're using, try to make sure that they're optimally automated so that you're not getting the same alerts over and over and over again. And if there's an alert potentially that your company thinks isn't a high risk and maybe the development team has it in their backlog to fix, for now you're just getting these alerts in the meantime, then try to see if there's a way for you to shut off that alert, especially if it's one that is already considered a low risk and low priority for your company. It may take weeks, months for the engineering teams to even get to it and fix it. And in the meantime, it's really just flooding your system with the same alert over and over again. It really takes up space in your mental capacity, taking time away from other alerts that may actually be important and may actually need action taken. Number three on this list is the fact that cybersecurity teams typically have smaller team sizes. And I do want to emphasize the word typically just because I did previously work at a financial services company and our cybersecurity team was thousands of people compared to now my team is a much much smaller fraction of that team size but we still deal with many of the security concerns of a bigger company and I would say for most small to mid-sized companies that is probably the truth your cybersecurity team is probably not going to be more than 50 or 100 people in a typical small to medium-sized company and while I don't think there's anything wrong with that it can definitely cause stress just because cybersecurity security teams are relatively smaller teams and in a smaller team that typically means that someone working on a cybersecurity security team with let's say 30 people compared to someone at a big company with, with hundreds or thousands of people in their cybersecurity team. You're doing similar work, but you just have less people doing the work with you, but you just have less hands on deck. That can sometimes lead to overwork or stressful environments where you have to take on more than you can chew, or there's just generally a lot on people's plates when they're dealing with multiple different things from legal to engineering to, to privacy to regulations. There's so many things that go into cybersecurity and on a smaller team that typically means the few number of people are handling or juggling it all and that can definitely cause some stress especially depending on the sector that you're in and while i don't think there is a fast or immediate fix to really help remediate the fact that cybersecurity teams are just smaller than engineering teams i really do think that the solution really goes down into leadership and how your manager or how your security team is managed. For example, if the team culture is to work on weekends, stay online at 8 p.m. at night, having to log into work even on your vacation days or your sick days, that is probably not a great team culture, especially for a cybersecurity team that is already under stress. But then on the flip side, you may have a small team, but while you're out sick or while you're on paternity leave or on vacation, the rest of the team has your back and is working on the things while you're out doing your thing. And then if someone else is out on the team, then you're also helping out so that everyone is able to 
kind of had their time of break and sickness and, and dealing with personal life things because that doesn't stop just when things get busy at work. That is probably the best balance of making sure that it's a good work environment with a good team culture of helping people, of understanding people's situations, helping your teammates while they're out, and of course open communication with your teammate and your manager for all the things that are going on in your life. Honestly, that just helps so so much knowing that someone has your back and that you have theirs and it just makes for a much much better work environment and that's something that i have been really lucky to have in my current team and another thing of course when you have a smaller team means that you may be doing more on-call hours so this is a perfect segue to to dealing with on-call and i do want to know here that i haven't worked in an on-call environment or an on-call team for my cybersecurity career i know eventually i'll have on-call hours but currently i do not and one of the things that causes stress in a cybersecurity team is the on-call hours for example if something goes wrong then someone from the cybersecurity team is going to be the person who is the point of contact to assess or review any issues remediate anything jump onto fire drills or emergency calls and typically on call means 24 7 so something can go wrong at 3 a.m in the morning or on a saturday when you already have plans and that is another stressful part of the job that i think is something that definitely should be discussed while you're interviewing for the job so you know what to expect but this is also one of those things that you that you kind of can't remove just because because the nature of the job does include availability or make sure things are online and not down or if there is some security issue then there is a cybersecurity sme who is there to help answer questions about it having good steps to remediate things and knowing what to do when things go wrong is important for example if there are typically five or so things that can go wrong during on-call hours then those should be documented and laid out so someone coming in who may not have that much experience is able to figure things out without being stressed out especially i would assume for the first few times you're doing it if it's at 3 or 4 a.m in the morning and you have no one to ask questions to and you're the only one awake working on this problem it really does get stressful so well-documented procedures making sure that there's good training around what happens during on call what to expect things that can go wrong worst case scenario people you can contact to get in touch with if you really have no idea what to do as a beginner or an entry level person basically just setting people up for success and try to make on-call hours a little less stressful than they tend to be and the last thing i want to discuss is the fact that in cybersecurity you can oftentimes feel like you're always online so just because you work nine to five in your day job as a cybersecurity professional that doesn't mean that hacker news stops at 5 p.m even if you're not on call you may feel the need to read up on cybersecurity news check to see the newest zero day exploits and see if they affect you and your company try to learn a new tool or technology off the job or off the clock and just doing it in your free time honestly this can be a good thing to a lot of people where you're just really passionate about cybersecurity and you spend a lot of time focusing on that outside of work as well as during work but on the flip side that can also mean that you that you are always thinking about work and that is something i think is is not a good way to live life especially for people who for example go on vacation but they're constantly anxious about checking work emails or getting serious to check to see if there's anything that went wrong at work and especially in cybersecurity i think a lot of that ties back into the fact that you always feel like you need to be online checking things checking for updates new vulnerabilities or anything that has to do with cybersecurity and hacker news and the fact that it's so fast-paced and can come at any minute any hour of any day that is one of the most stressful things and while you can't stop those that is the case for many of the cons of working in cybersecurity i do think one of the best ways to help alleviate this a little bit it's just practicing mindfulness and these are things like meditation and i don't want to be so woo woo about it but i do think that your mental health is just as important as your physical and when i say mental health you really want to take care of yourself with enough sleep eating good healthy foods stretching or exercising just getting your body moving a little bit during work as well as outside of work as well as things like breathing exercises meditation journaling whether it's daily monthly weekly these are all things that tie back to mindfulness and and trying to help remediate a lot of the stress that comes with the job and of course a lot of people can hear this list and say oh that's not for me i don't like to journal i don't like like to meditate it's fun if you don't like it i don't think that anyone really loves to sit down and just sit for 30 minutes and just breathe to themselves is the fact that your brain is always on always racing trying to get to the next thought trying to get to the next idea the next remediation for the next vulnerability and mindfulness practices are really just there for you to help take a break take a pause in your day no matter how busy it is to ground yourself and live in the moment 
And then I also write down three things I'm grateful for. It can be anything, again, from the cup of coffee you had in the morning to, to playing with your pets. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other helpful tips on helping you remediate burnout in cybersecurity. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. Also, we have a Discord channel linked below if you guys want to join that. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.